Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about first order linear differential equations. Okay, so let's uh, just uh, post back and see what we can uh, surmise from what we've learned so far. So let's talk about the, the general method. The method, method that we've been using to solve DEs is that of integration. So our integration method so far, we've talked about two basic types. So the first type is that of directly integrable. And that's of the form, that's equation, differential equations of the form dx dt is equal to f of t. All right? So in this form, of course, we can just, uh, we can just integrate directly. And that's the simplest type. To solve. So that, of course, right here is just x of t. All right, and the next method we learned was that of uh, separation of variables. And that form is a differential equation can be written as follows. You write f of x comma t, and that's actually equal to um, g of t times h of x. Okay, in this form, what we do is, of course, you integrate 1 over h uh, dx is equal to the integral of g dt, and then go from there. Now you can see the videos on that in our other uh, playlist videos. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about a third and final form, which is that uh, first order uh, linear uh, differential equation. Okay, and this form is actually going to be uh, probably the most useful. Uh, for applications. Okay, and uh, um, but in terms of the method of solution, it's actually, I would think of it really as a generalization. Of, of uh, separation of variables. That is uh, number two. So let's go back to separation of variables and see if we can get a, a new, a kind of a more different or a more general perspective on it. So we've always had, what we do is you have this equation dx dt is equal to h of x uh, times g of t. Okay. So I like to always put this as actually h of x of t inside of there. Okay. Maybe I'll write that again. So h of x of t g of t. Of course, x of t is an unknown function that we want to find. Okay, so the first thing what we do with this is always multiply the entire equation by this function, 1 over h of x comma t. Okay, and then we get something of the form, you get an x prime times 1 over h uh, <coughs> is equal to g of t. All right. And now, when I integrate this with respect to time on both sides, let's break that down. What this is, is a, d, uh, a 1 over h of x of t times dx dt dt. Okay, now of course what we do here is we take make a, do, a u substitution. u of equals um, x of t, so we get a du uh, is equal to dx dt dt. Okay, so of course this thing right there, that's what's up there, so we can swap all this out. We get a 1 over h of u du. And from there, of course, we, 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 uh, we can do this. But the whole point is, uh, uh, the, the key thing here, the key to all of this, was that multiplying 
uh, by 1 over h of x of t um, uh, uh, made uh, 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 both sides uh, integrable. Okay, so actually we have a name for this. I'm going to actually call this rho of t. And we're going to call rho of t this thing, this, this factor is actually called the integrating factor. We're going to see how we can generalize this process that we did for separation of variable style problems and develop other integrating factors that will solve an even more general set of problems that aren't necessarily separable, but the same sort of idea holds. The idea is we're going to try to find this factor of integration, and when we multiply it by both sides of the equation, right, we're going to get to something that we can integrate. Okay. All right, so let's, let's move on. So this is give an example of, of, uh, of how this works. So uh, we'll go back to a separation of variable style problem. Okay, so we have a dx dt, and that's equal, to, we'll say it's equal to t times x squared. All right, so in this case, what I'm going to take is a row of t is going to be equal to 1 over x of t quantity squared. All right, that's going to be my row of t. I'm going to multiply it by both sides. And that becomes uh, 1 over x squared dx dt is equal to t. And then um, what we do here is then integrate both sides. One way of seeing this, of course, is that um, we're integrating with respect to t, is that these dt's cancel. We're left with, uh, we find. Um, the following form. And we can then solve for x, right? So we find x simply enough. Okay, like that. Okay, so uh, that's a, a good example, but the idea here is the, the, the row of t was this really specific form that allowed us to unlock this integration. All right, so now let's go on to actually what uh, um, a differential equation. I'm going to just erase this. It's a little easier to do if I just erase it. But what a first order differential equation is. A linear first order differential equation. And how it differs from a separable equation. Okay. So let's go back. All right. So a linear first order DE. Okay, so it's either a first order linear DE or a linear first order DE. I don't care. Uh, they both are the same uh, name effectively. All right, so let's talk about what it is. It's going to be of the form that, this is going to be the form dx dt uh, plus capital P of t times x of t is equal to q of t, where p and q are, you know, are some given uh, functions. Uh, so clearly this form is uh, uh, if uh, q is non-zero, uh, um, then, uh, then this isn't a separable equation. There's no way to, to separate it all. Okay. No, and, uh, you know, well, it should back up there a second. Say in general, you know, in general, this thing is not separable. Uh, generally. Okay. And in some specific cases where P and Q are, are related in some special way, it could be separable using the, uh, uh, the method we've seen earlier, but not separable in general. All right, so now let's let's see if we can kind of see how this works. So again, the goal, as I've stated so far, is to uh, find uh, some rho of t, this integrating factor, it's 
so that uh, we can integrate. Uh, for the separable case, for separable DEs, we always ended up doing some sort of U substitution, right? But now if you look over here, we see on this, this, uh, this left-hand side here, we see is actually there's a sum, okay? So uh, we should really be thinking about a different type of uh, integration uh, tool instead of using, doing a use substitution, what we're really looking at here is something like the product rule. Okay, so what I'm saying is, if I, uh, so for instance, and this is just very generally, the product rule is the follows, right? So if I have an A of T and B of T, two functions of time, okay, and I want to take their derivative, it's going to be a prime times b plus b times b prime times a. Okay? So we see up here that there is this sum. Let's see if we can do this. So if I actually say that a is equal to x of t, right? And then a prime is going to be equal to x prime of t, right? Right, and that means then if I look at my format here, I see a dx dt, uh, and, then, uh, and then we have a plus, a capital P, of t times x, that means then we can get from this that if I was going to put this in the right form, that this is this this looks like I can try to find something. So what I want to do now, of course, is multiply this whole thing by some row of t, right? It's going to unlock the structure of the product rule. The, it looks like it's the result of some sort of product rule type differentiation. So if I have a row of t times x prime plus rho times capital P there times x, I see it fits the format of that this right here is your a prime. The rho of t is going to be the b. Uh, this rho times capital P then will, will be the b prime. And of course, a is equal to x. All right. So let's put this out a bit. If I have a uh, um, um, if, so what we're saying here then is b is equal to rho of t and then b prime is also equal to rho times capital P. So this is, is effectively a differential equation, right? So, um, uh, so I can actually say then that, uh, that that has to be equal to, if b prime is equal to it has to be equal then to rho prime. So this right here itself is another differential equation. So it turns out, I'm going to just give you what the solution to that differential equation is. Oops. Capital P rho. It has a solution of as follows. Rho of t is equal to e to the antiderivative of capital P dt. All right, so uh, we can actually check that that's the, that that works. So if I actually take its derivative, it's gonna I'm gonna take the derivative of e to the whatever this thing is up there. That's gonna just be itself again. Times the derivative of what's in the exponent, which is going to be capital P. That itself is rho right there. So that's going to be rho prime is equal to rho times capital P. All right, so uh, in this equation here then, what I can put in its place here is just rho prime. All right, so let's see if, I, I'm gonna have to go to a new page here, but let's see if we can, uh, we can restart this thing on another page. So again, I'm going to have, I've multiplied by rho t times uh, x prime plus capital P times x, and that's all going to be equal to, I'll multiply rho on the other side, times q of t. Okay, so this is my first order linear equation. And if I take rho of t is equal to uh, e to the antiderivative of capital P dt, uh, then 
what I get here is I get a rho times p prime, then p prime is equal to capital P times rho. That's what I should say first. And then what I can do is write this as follows. I can take this equation and rewrite it as follows. I just multiply this in there. And I also multiply that in there, plus rho times capital P times x. But because P times rho is equal to P prime times x, and that's going to be rho times Q on the other side, this thing looks like the product rule. Okay, so that means I can reverse that product rule and actually now go rho times x, uh, all with the derivative on the outside there, equals the rho times q. Right, uh, we might want to just check this. Of course, if I take its derivative, that becomes rho prime x plus rho times x prime, and that clearly is this again. Okay, so this is our differential equation, but now, of course, it's integrable. Okay, so what I can do then, of course, is integrate both sides of the equation. And I see here there's a, a, a big derivative on the outside, so the integral, rho times x prime dt, that's going to be rho times x. Now, on the other side, of course, I have an integral of rho of t times q of t dt. And whatever this integral is, that whatever I can get out of that integral there by, by, by doing that integration then, but of course the next step I can just do is just solve uh, for x of t, which is pretty simple here. It's just going to be x of t is equal to 1 over rho of t times... Oh, I forgot one thing. We always, every time we integrate, we always add a constant and an additive constant there. So that's going to be c plus integral rho of t, q of t, dt. And then this answer is always uh, with where rho of t is the special integrating factor. It will always be e to the antiderivative of p, t, dt. Okay, so let's see if we can uh, formalize this process. I'm going to lay this out in steps, and then we're going to do some examples. Okay, so, uh, so we always start here. We always have some, uh, we always, so here, let's just summarize. Okay, so the summarization is as follows. First, what we do is we look at our DE and try to identify we're going to identify capital P and capital Q. Again, we have some sort of equation of the form dx dt plus P of t times x is equal to Q of t. We have to, we have to look at the equation and actually find what our P and what our Q are. The second is to create the integrating factor. And that, we have to compute that by take rho of t and making it equal to e to the antiderivative of capital P of t dt, okay? The next thing to do is to multiply. And then reverse uh, the product rule. And reverse the product rule. Okay, so that, that entails um, doing this step. Okay, so we go from here to there, and that's that reversing the product rule, is to go from here to there, okay? And the fourth step is to integrate. and then solve uh, for x of t. Okay, so then we integrate and we get this again.
Okay. All right, and then of course, if you wanted to have a, a fifth step there, of course, is uh, uh, find uh, C via some sort of initial value problem uh, data. All right, so you're going to have some sort of initial. So let's do an example of of this of of, of this. I'll do two examples in this video, and in a later video, I'll do some more examples for you. So let's try this example here. dx dt, this is my example, dx dt is equal to negative x plus e to the negative t. Now typically, we write differential equations with the derivative of one side and everything else on this side, but we have to identify here's where our x is, right? So I'm going to rewrite this in the format of our first order linear differential equation. So everything with x has to move over to one side. So that becomes a plus x. And then everything that's just a, a function of only t goes on the other side. And clearly now I see that that has to be my q of x, or q of t, sorry. So that's what I mean by identify the, the components. All right, so then we're looking here, and we're seeing, so what, what is capital P of t? Well, clear, uh, clearly capital P of t is just simply 1. Okay, because I can just put a 1 there, right? Multiply x by 1. Okay, so the next step, of course, that's, so that was, number, uh, that was number 1, is to identify p of t and q of t. Okay, oh, um, uh, I'm going to actually make this e to the negative 2t. I made a little typo there. Okay, and that just makes the math work out a little bit more interestingly uh, later on, so no, no big change. All right, so the next step, of course, is to compute rho of t, our integrating factor. So rho of t is going to be e to the antiderivative of 1 dt. And that's going to be equal to e to the positive t. Okay, great. So one might ask right now, uh, what about having a plus c up there? Because this is an antiderivative, we need to add our additive constants. And uh, the short answer is, of course, is just the c... Uh, does not matter. Um, you can put it in or not, or you just set it equal to zero, okay? Uh, and so if you want to go through the process of having that C, C stay in there, you can. You'll find out it always cancels, no matter what it is. Okay, so the third step, of course, is that multiplication step. So we're going to do that. Okay, we're going to get, um, you know, we have an X prime times rho, right? Uh, plus uh, rho times x is equal to uh, rho times e to the negative 2t. All right, so let's write that all out. e to the t x prime plus e to the t x is equal to e to the t times e to the negative 2t. And of course, the 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 product of two exponentials is the ex, is the uh, with the same base of course is the sum of the exponent is is whatever the base is the sum of the exponents which is going to be e to the negative t of a plus one and a minus two all right and on this side of course we reverse that product rule you can always just skip to the step of just putting x of t times e to the to the t all primed e to the negative t all right and then the f final step is integration. And we get x of t, e to the t, is equal to, and that's always a plus c there. And so now we take the integral of e to the negative t, which is going to be negative e to the negative t plus c. And then what we do is um, uh, divide by that row there, and then get x of t by itself. And that's going to be, now when I do this, I'm going to get a negative e to the negative 2t. Because again, I'm multiplying this whole thing by e to the negative t, right? Plus c times e to the negative t. Okay, so there's our general solution to the problem. All right, so if I had an IVP, right, if I actually had some initial data, I could again go. So let's just give an example. If I have x at 0 is equal to 1. Okay, let's find out um, how to do that. All right, so we have x of 0 is equal to 1 is equal to, now I have to plug t equals 0 everywhere, and I get a negative 1, that comes from here, that part, plus c times 1, all right, 
And so that means then that C has to be equal to 2. All right, so there, the solution to my IVP then is going to be um, 2 e to the negative t uh, minus e to the negative 2 t. Okay, so there's our result. I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's go over and do one more example really quick. Uh, and again, in a later video, I'll put even more examples. But let's just give an example that's a little bit more interesting, maybe a little bit more complex. We have dx dt is equal to negative 1 over t x plus sine t. Um, and then we're going to make that all over t. Okay, so this is an inseparable equation. We can't quite separate this out. Um, uh, but I need to put it in the form, right? So what I'm going to do is uh, dx dt. I have, to bring, I have to identify that there, that's the term with the x in it. So that has to go over to the other side. That becomes a plus 1 over t times x is equal to sine of t over t. So again, our p of t now is going to be equal to 1 over t. And our q of t is going to be equal to the sine of t all over t. Okay, so the next step, of course, is to find our integrating factor. The antiderivative of 1 over t is the natural log of t, and, but when we do so, we have to make sure, let's t actually make an IVP out of this. I'm going to say that x of 1 is equal to um, 0, all right? So why I did that is because now t is greater than 0. So this makes sense, all right? So otherwise, I'd have to put an absolute value there, okay? And of course, natural log and the exponential are inverses of each other, so that's just equal to t. So my integrating factor is pretty simple there. It's just t. Okay, so now let's do it. So now we multiply t times x prime. That's this part right there. Plus uh, t times 1 over t times x, and then we multiply t to the other side, we just get, and the, the t's cancel here too, or the t, t over t, sine t, okay? Okay, I'm just going to uh, clean this up a bit. All right, and then I integrate. Uh, oh. Actually, before I do that, I have to reverse the product rule here. Okay, that becomes x of t times t, all primed, equals sine of t. Right now, I'm going to integrate both sides. Okay, and that becomes t times x of t. And the integral of sine, or the antiderivative of sine, of course, is negative cosine plus c. And then I solve for x of t. And that's going to be, uh, we're going to have c over t minus cosine of t over t. All right, and then I solve my IVP to find a unique solution. So x of 1 uh, is equal to, uh, equal to 0. So I put that in. We have a c minus cosine of 1 over 1 is equal to 0. Uh, so that means then that c is equal to cosine of 1, whatever that value is. So the final answer then is x of t is equal to cosine of 1 over t minus cosine of t over t. So that's my solution to the initial value problem. Okay, so in a later video, we'll of course go over many more examples of linear first order equations. Thank you very much.